we're going to record. I'm going to move us up to a spotlight for everyone. All right. So, yeah. And I'm sorry, guys. Technically, of course, we should be going to watercolor, but because it's April, but I did want to uh, finish this drawing. And where is my sketch on it? Hold on. Looking for the original photo here somewhere. Oh, yes, here it is. So here's the original photo. And, you know, we really pretty much had time just to sketch out the farm using, if you remember correctly. So here, let me show this to you. So I'll send this picture mm -hmm. over. This shows the perspective lines. I'm going to take this right now so you guys have this. And I thought we would work more on the sky and the clouds today. So, Julia, you are going to start by drawing this uh, thing, which I'm about to send across the clip. Let me do that. Oh, Diana, that's coming along nicely. Yes. Yes. And now I feel the outside more. Do you feel it? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Okay. So I here, have to correct a little bit of the on the cat that are mis mischaracterized. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's uh, easy. I feel more. I was worried about um, are, are people getting this is that it's outside, outside. Yeah, right. So Julia, the thing to remember, and everybody, the thing to remember about this um, thing. This is a this is a perspective lesson, right? This is a two point perspective lesson. So. On this side, this side, this line is going, um, so the, uh, the horizon line is here. Shape. Horizon line is here, right? And everything that comes below the horizon line, the only parts of the house that are straight, that are not angled, are what come exactly at the horizon line. Sorry, horizon line is here. So this line that's below kind of angles up towards a single vanishing point. The roofs, the roof lines are a little bit different, um, but you can really see it here that each of these lines, so this line is gonna go up towards a single vanishing point that's on the horizon line, this line is going to go to the same vanishing point. This one is as well, and this one is as well, which basically means these four lines, one's going up, these are going to gradually get steeper because they're going to the same vanishing point. So when you're drawing this, uh, Julia, you want to keep that in mind. Um, so go ahead and you get started drawing it and then we'll talk about how to do the base. I will walk you through that. Um, for those of you who have already got a guy, <laughs> let me pull this back here. So this is how far I noticed some of you got a little bit farther with this. This is how far I got. Um, I didn't really talk to you about the sky at all. Um, I still want to, still want to show you. Want to be able to see both of these things. So we've got this sky with blue clouds. Uh, there's trees. So I thought we would work on the sky and developing. Does anybody else want to work on any other part of this painting? Do you have any? Speak now. <laughs> <laughs> or that's how I will start is like kind of where this is. I know yours is in different places, but who, what other help would you like on this painting as we work on it? Sky and trees. Sky and trees, let's do it. Okay, and then a little bit of, maybe we'll, we'll remind ourselves about clouds a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my first question as I always look at, I always think about when I look at a painting that I've been away from for a week, and it's kind of half finished is, is there a glaze that will help me kind of push this, uh, push this uh, painting in the direction that I need it? Um, does anybody have any thoughts about that? What kind of glaze might be helpful right now? Ideas. And do you, what do you think, Diana? I, I mean, I, I would actually do 
a, a what do you call the color? I would do a yellow ochre. Interesting. I like that idea. That's not what I was thinking, but I could totally go with that. A yellow ochre glaze could go over everything. I was kind of thinking maybe a cooler color, like a blue or a green, but I uh, maybe both. Maybe we'll try a yellow ochre glaze. Why the heck not? Um, so yes, glazes it would be bring up because it is so much blue in the painting already. That's true. We started with green, so you're right. That's absolutely true. I like that idea. Um, so the the ochre will sort of bring in a weathered look. It'll bring in some of that brightness. Well, it's not going to look bright when we do it. So a glaze, for those of you, uh, just to remind you, is a a kind of a watery color that is laid over the top of a of a of a painting that's in progress, and it's used. It's almost like the filter of a camera. Here, I'm trying to get my palette up here so you can see it. It's like the filter of a camera. You know, when you turn your camera on and you make something black and white or sepia is like a better, it's like a, it's like a way of kind of toning and sending the painting in different, adding bits of color kind of all over. We never really quite know what a glaze is going to do. And sometimes some parts of a painting, you can choose to glaze as many times. As, as many times as you want. You can choose to glaze as many times as you want. You can glaze once. I glaze very often. I'd say a big painting maybe has 20 or 30 glazes on it at various points in the process as I'm trying to move something. So let's try Diana's idea. I love this idea of an ochre glaze, yellow ochre. If you don't have yellow ochre, and the, even those of you who have done, like Olga, I know you've gotten so a certain point. It might be fun to try a glaze and then kind of pull back from that. Oops, I need this paper towel. Hold on. Oh, there it is. You're stepping on my painting. Move away. Don't drink the water. Move away. Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> <Ready>. okay. <laughs> um, I, I actually, I was thinking about, uh, I have gold. Like really, like gold. Like I glit. You know, I've never glazed with gold, so I'm like, go for it. If you don't like oh. it, you can wipe it off. Yeah, like for the last acrylics lesson, I thought I would do something very bright. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Let's try. It. If you don't have ochre, you could try yellow, like a cadmium yellow. Even yellow is an interesting color to go. Ye yellows and ochres are interesting colors to glaze with. Sort of traditionally. Glazes are done and, and let me know if I'm, oh yeah, this looks really great. Uh, yellows and ochres are, are, are interesting. Mostly, traditionally, glazing is done with dark colors, like dark pigment colors, like blues and, you know, dark uh, alizar and crimson, viridian green, phthalo blue, that kind of thing, burnt umber. But I started glazing with ochres and I really like, it does a different thing than a darker pigment. So let's try it. Um, you're gonna start with a very big brush, right? A thick one inch, this is a one inch brush. I am pulling off, oh, no wait, I don't want, I want extra, I want the extra water on there, all right? And so I want this to be very drippy, I want there to be very wet. And I'm taking a lot, taking a bit of the color here, like this, so that my, my brush has color and water, but it doesn't have paint piled up on it. You're gonna hear, you hear me use this term a lot. Loading your brush is like this. See the difference? This is a loaded brush. You can see the paint kind of piled on it, but I don't want that for this particular phase. I want to be able to see the painting through. Great idea, Dan, the more I think about it, the more I like it. And now I'm going to take my brush, a full of acrylic, uh, full of uh, watery ochre, and I'm going to run it. And I, and if I run out of water, I'm going to get more water in my brush. I'm going to go across the whole thing. Oh, and it's really, it is doing interesting things. Ochre is also an interesting color because it's neither warm nor cool. It's kind of a neutral. And it's a little on the cool side, but it's a yellow, so it's got some brightness to it, but in a weird kind of subtle way. I really like that. Look at the difference. 
it does add. So as we start to add our blues into our sky, and it also adds a little bit of um, sort of a variation in our barn, which may help us in terms of creating a sort of older look. Now, if there's areas I don't want this paint to go, I can just take my paper towel and pull it off. Um, there'll still be a little bit of ochre, but it'll be much more subtle. So I'm kind of now pulling the ochre off the darkest and the lightest areas. I'm going to keep it everywhere else because I really like it. And I even like, you know, because I'm working at an angle, I've got drips here. If you're working flat on the ground, if you're looking flat on your table, you will not get the drips. But if you're working on an easel, you will, or anything that's kind of elevated. And I think that's kind of nice. Let's see. Yeah, I think you should do, uh, uh, don't, don't worry, Natalia, I'm gonna talk you through all of this. You're, we're gonna work on the sky and we're gonna work on the, the trees. Okay. And so that's what we're, because that's what we didn't do last week. So that's what we're really gonna focus on. Um, and that's where you are. So start with your glaze. So everybody start with your glaze. And then we're gonna put this aside while I start doing some color mixing, oh, yeah. So let's see, we're gonna look at the sky. So there's some pretty dramatic clouds. You guys remember painting clouds from our first lesson? Oops. Yeah. Yeah, Tashween, go ahead and just, um, uh, let's, we started with an ochre glaze a yellow glaze, which I think has really helped uh, with the painting. So start with a yellow glaze, or if you don't want to do a yellow glaze, you can do another one. And now we're going to work on sky. And we'll, we'll do the grasses too, but we're really going to work on this area. And then you can continue working on your others. All right, so I definitely see, I'm going to put, I'm gonna. Yes, go ahead. I'm definitely going to give myself a couple blues. I'm going to give myself some phthalo blue, which is that cool, bright, crazy jewel toned blue. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to write these down and send this out. So as you're working on yours, you can start to pull out your palette for sure. Let's see, where's my old green blue? So for the sky, definitely, we're going to need a little bit of cadmium red or a warm red. Definitely, we're going to need, you know me, and my old, it's funny, you'll learn after a while that certain painting painters have obsessions with certain color palettes. I have about seven colors I go back to constantly. So I'm gonna put some ultra, so I've got both phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. I'll label them and I'll take a picture of this palette. What else? Oh yes, and viridian green, cause we've got those trees and white. Maybe it's. I may add some cadmium. So viridian green is here. Notice that I'm arranging my acrylics in kind of on the edge of my palette. So when I start to mix, I can mix down but maintain these pure colors. I'll have a little bit of cadmium yellow. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we're going to start with. Oh, yeah, and white. Oops, got the white. My golden tube of white has come to the, there's so much in there, but it's very flat. I don't know if you guys find the golden, so that you want a lot of white. Don't put too much on though, because you don't want it to dry. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my palette. I'm going to start by mixing a blue color for the sky. And I really, 
we might try phthalo, just a little bit of phthalo. No, sorry, that's ultramarine. Oh wait, let me take a label these and take a picture of them so you've got it. So this is alt blue. This is P blue. B sienna. B green. Cad red. This is cad yellow. Here's a picture of this palette. You can start pulling out some of these colors. You are not limited to these colors, of course, right? We're not limited to these colors. We are, this is just, this is the palette I like to start with. Yeah, there we go, that's a good shot. So here is the palette. And we're going to start with the basic sky color, which I think could just be a little phthalo blue, just to give it a little, this painting a little brightness, just to be a little phthalo blue and white. And notice, it does not take a lot of phthalo blue to create a, a pretty dark surface. So a lot more white. We're going to start. with just a phthalo blue and white. And then I'm gonna show you how to, we're gonna mix a green for the trees so that we can get the trees in kind of over and around the sky. And then we'll start, and then we'll work on clouds, but let's work on the base of the sky, the top color. So that's just phthalo blue and white. And then this, the tree is going to be, the trees are going to be viridian, the dark trees are going to be viridian green and burnt sienna, right? Because all of our, not too much, because you don't want it to be too red. And if you want it to be a little bit darker, you can add a little bit of ultramarine blue. Because all of our landscape greens have some red in them. Julia, this is going to be relevant when you move to, uh, this is a truism also with uh, watercolor painting, is whenever you're painting green, you're mixing a little bit, for, for landscapes, you're mixing a little bit of red in with it. There will always be red. So there's kind of a dark green down here. So let's start with these two colors. We might do a little bit more palette knife work. I don't know why I'm totally feeling it this time, this week. So this is B green plus B sienna. Bless you. Thank you. Plus alt blue. Do you guys find it helpful when I write down these mixes and send them to you? Is that helpful? I don't want to like be wasting your time or anything, but and the sky is phthalo blue plus white. Let's just work those two first. So here, I'll take a picture. Where are we? Oh, nope, not me. <laughs> That's pretty good. So notice the only thing we haven't really damped down with a little bit of its complement is the sky. So now I'm gonna take, is this dry yet? If your painting isn't dry, you may wanna dab it dry. Mine's not quite dry. So I'm pulling off the extra drippy stuff with my paper towels. And I'm going back to my big brush. This time, instead of going in with a wet brush, I'm coming in with a dry brush. So I'm dipping my brush in the water and then dipping it in the blue paint. And I'm doing a series of strokes that are, I kind of go between vertical and horizontal, vertical, sorry, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical horizontal, vertical. And instead of painting in one area, and I'm letting some of this, oops, wait, you can't really see this here, hold on. 
There we go. Vertical, horizontal. Now look how nice already. It's hard to see here. I'll take a picture so you can really see it. How nice this color looks with little bits of the orange face peeping through. Vertical, horizontal. So instead of doing this, I'm not doing this. Scrub, 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 scrub. See, this is going over the same place to make sure I've got full coverage. I'm not doing that because that looks flat and it doesn't let. So I'm literally making a stroke going around, making another stroke somewhere else. So I'm moving around the whole I might have to mix more paint as I'm doing this. And I'm kind of roughly, loosely going into my trees a little bit. I don't need to preserve my tree line. I'm bringing that in. So this is a really key. That, that sort of going back and forth, that scrubbing thing is kind of a nervous habit. It's a nervous, I need a little bit more water. So I need more water on my brush, but then I'm squeezing it again so it isn't too wet. It's a nervous habit and it creates a very flat painting. We want some of our layers to come through. I think you guys are all starting to get the value of layers. So you can see in this picture, and then I'm gonna go back over and like kind of lightly tap away any strong vertical or horizontal lines. So if my brush has left a mark, I'm going to kind of move around it, tap it like this. So here, that's like uh, basic. I'm going to take a picture of this. Yeah. So little bits of this orange sky really help. I'll take a close up too. So you can really see how much. There you go. So this is our start, our base for our sky. And then when you've got your sky in, okay, now I'm gonna clean out my brush again. When you've got your sky in, you're going to go in with some of that burnt sienna, ultramarine, uh, the green mix, and you're going to pop it in. So I'm taking, I'm kind of loading my brush with paint. So there's a lot of, actually, I have to mix more. You'll notice because it takes time in between sessions, like your paint will dry. So I want kind of a dark paint and I'm almost pushing it up into the sky. See how I'm doing that? I'm like pushing into the sky. I'm gonna get more paint on my brush, going from the edge of the barn to create a more cloudy. So hopefully your sky is still a little bit dry, uh, still a little bit wet. So you're doing a wet on wet. And see how I'm almost tapping to create a lighter, isn't that so much easier than trying to paint every damn leaf kind <laughs> of thing? Oops, hang on. Go away. There we go. See how I'm just tapping and pushing. So I'm using that big brush to this create very, uh, viridium green, burn sienna, and ultramarine blue. Yep. Okay. To make it dark enough. So see, I'm just tapping into the sky while it's still wet. Uh, let's see, what else is happening in this picture? Yep, a little bit more of the same here. It's a little bit heavier over here. Right? And yeah, same thing pretty much happening up here. So it's really, I'm using in particular this kind of vertical choppy stroke. I see how I'm almost holding, I'm tapping into the sky so that I have that feeling. I barely, I'm holding the brush really lightly. I'm not, I'm not clinging it very tight. I'm not clinging to it very tightly. 
And I can bring that color down into whatever I had here. I guess the same thing is really happening here. So this is like, you know, not a fir tree, a deciduous tree with, you know, leaves hanging off it. So notice where I'm paying attention. So, so there's two things that make this really important. This is a very key technique. One is that the sky is wet and the, um, and your green is, you know, and you're pushing wet green tree into a wet sky. That's important. Uh, it's important that I'm using a big brush, right? A big, even a raggedy brush is kind of better. It's also important that I'm not trying to cover everything. Here, towards the base, uh, this is a pretty solid color, but it's important that I am doing a kind of light tapping motion Wet, so I'm working wet on wet. I'm using a big brush. And where I'm really focusing my attention is the edge, where the tree, where I'm giving detail, is where the tree meets the sky. And look at how quickly I did that. And see how leafy that looks? So it's, it's a lot of, you know, with the right tool, I can pretty quickly convey a feeling. Here, I'll take a picture of it so you can see it. I can fairly quickly convey this feeling of leaves and trees. Notice it gets a little softer and lighter as we move up, right? Because you can see more through the trees, like your source here. Now, if I want to, I can mix burnt sienna and ultramarine, uh, and sorry, viridian green. I can make a kind of darker mix here. And I can put a little bit of it onto the side of my palette knife. And I can come in here and add just a few branches. I don't even know how well that's gonna work. Palette knife might not be the best. Let's see. I might try a palette knife. Yep, there you go. You just have to make sure, not too many, right? Just a few branches going in different directions. And then once again, more paint kind of on top of them. So you can only see little bits. If you want to. You can also, yesterday I was using, I wonder if that would work today. Yesterday I was using, um, um, I was using this to do some tree stems. I was using a bit of cardboard. See how the cardboard has this corrugated thing? So sometimes you can like actually take, I don't know if this will work, but we'll see here. Hold on, let me mix some. Paint. Ugh, the problem with acrylic is that it dries so damn fast. I can't wait to start working in oil with you guys. For those of you who want to, you're totally welcome to stay in acrylic. The, the, you can do the same things pretty much, but the material, the medium is very different. Sometimes I can use this. See the, to create a sense of, of branches, but not too many. I have too many here. I'm going to have to cover them up. Don't get too over, don't get too much. Uh, uh, with painting, a little bit of detail, particularly in a painting of this size, goes a long way. So see how I'm, I'm, I'm adding them in and then I'm kind of obscuring them. I'm adding a little bit of darker. So I can still kind of see the branches, but not really. Look at, isn't that amazing? Look, it's like a damn miracle. I have to paint every leaf at all. It's like a dang miracle, like how to use the brush, just working the edges, just adding a few details, and then this very detailed area, right? There it is. I mean, you can decide you want to get more into it or not, but you do not have to paint every leaf on every tree. It's really more the softer edges, you know, the softer edges. And for... 
this bit of green here, which is a little bit lighter, you can mix, I need more viridian green, hold on. You can just add, so for the lighter green tree colors, the more yellowy ones, you can start with the basic, actually, if you want to, try a little cad red in your viridian green on this one, and then add some yellow. I'm gonna add cad yellow medium. You'll get this kind of pretty, I mean, try a little yellow ochre, see how that changes things. You'll lighten your greens. You'll, so the first thing you're going to do with all your landscape greens, just to, this is just a reminder, is you're going to mix a little bit of red in with them, a little bit of the complement to mute them a little bit and make them more look like nature. And then the second thing you do is you're, you're rarely going to lighten your greens with, um, with white because that will flatten. If you look here, if I do that, if I take some Green, oh, need more green, green. If I take, I'll show you. So I'm gonna show you what not to do. <laughs> you won't like it. Um, so here's viridian green and a touch of red, right? To create your base. If I try to lighten with white, I get something that looks like minty green toothpaste. See? I don't. I get something that looks like that. Blah. Look at the difference between that and that. So we never want to lighten with white. This is green and red lightened with yellow. So when you're lightening with trees, particularly if you're trying to preserve any warmth. Um, so you have a couple ways you could apply this on the side here. We could just scoop up a little bit on our palette and I'm trying to make it light enough. I'm adding both yellow ochre and see, I can lay on with my palette. And again, in this very, in vertical strokes, horizontal strokes, or I can use a brush. And I'm letting, notice I'm always letting some of my underpainting come through. That's what creates this sense of layers. And we did, you could do this same thing with the grass if you want. Let's see, what's that? Yep. You could take, you could kind of lay in, you, you load your palette knife. So yeah, Tosh and whoever was here with me yesterday, this is what we were doing yesterday. It was really fun. You don't have to, you could totally use a brush for this, but this is a way. And leaving it, even though it's stressful. And it's worth it, right? <laughs> right, because it's a different tool, right? Um, so that creates a kind of neat grass effect. Or you can try this using, once again, your big brush. Loading. I can do this brushy. Or you can use both. Notice, once again, you're not going to lighten your grass with white. It will look too minty fresh, like a, I don't know, like a like a mint or an old lady's furniture or something. I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I'm almost an old lady myself. I slam old ladies. But there we go. I know there's a little, a little bit too green. So we can bring that green, this green down into here as well. So spend a little bit of time working on that. Julia, you let me know when you're done with your drawing or send your drawing over for me to look at just as you're working on it.
So we're at whatever stage you're at in this, go ahead and send pictures as you're moving across. I want to try not to go to, oh, I should take pictures. I should try to take some pictures here so you can see. Ha! And I got blue paint on my knee already because I'm wearing kind of short -ed shorts. <laughs> Let's see how the summer is going to be. There we go. So here's kind of a picture of this yellow tree and here. It's funny, I, it's cool. I think what we're using a lot of the things that we practice over the last two months. We have practice clouds, we have practice trees, we practice structures, we practice grass and fields, right? We're, we're putting that all together right now uh, in this painting, unless you're working on something else. I love painting so much. <laughs> this is the moment when I feel like painting is just the so wonderful. You get to play, you get to get messy, <laughs> like legitimately. I can have meetings in a t-shirt, <laughs> not have to worry about it. Um, yeah, send it over. Ooh, Tashween, it's starting to come together. So Tashween, I'm feeling like your green is still a little uh, too greenish. I love this tree. I love what's happening here. Uh, and I like your sky a lot. Uh, I feel like the tree is a little too green. So add a little bit, oops, did I freeze? Okay, add a little bit of cadmium red into your green to make it a little bit more murky. You know what I mean? Like a little bit sort of more deep greenish. Um, very nice. Uh, Anik, very nice. Uh, see, the, see the color of Anik's tree, uh, the dark tree here? Take a look at that. That's what we're going for. Uh, uh, this is not bad, Anika. I feel like this is still a little too solid here. So try to bring your brush up like this a little bit higher. Uh, hold on, let me get here. Try to bring your brush up, uh, keep sort of moving up a little bit like the way we do clouds. I'm gonna review how we do clouds, but bring it up with less so that it gets kind of lighter and more transparent as we go higher. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Sandra, she, is that the watership down, Bunny? Mm, it's just a rabbit I got out of and splash. That's um, adorable. I'm not planning to do much more unless you have advice. Yeah, no, no. I agree with what Diana just said, which is stop now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good, because uh, I'm going to do a, a blue-eyed Lemio next. Excellent. So yeah, just keep working. And I promise we're getting into uh, watercolors next week. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a print of a blue-eyed Lemio. Me too. I'm totally looking forward to it too. Um, by the way, I am totally appreciating, let's see, Emma. Uh, not bad. I love your sky. Emma, go ahead and bring your sky up all the way up. Bring your sky up higher, your blue background. Because um, I think that will help us feel a little bit less like, whoa, I've stopped right at that corner. Although I do really love your base. Uh, yes, forward it, 
grab, grab that piece if you want to look at it again. This is really neat. Good job. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't really show, I, I think it's more important to show the mixing than to get the actual source in. So yeah, pull the source up and take a look. Let's see. Okay, so Rashmi, I love the color of your sky. I'm gonna tell you this, um, this is too thick, right? So bring, I'm gonna have you bring some of your sky color down in to cut off your, a bit, I want you to have some sky above your tree. So I'm gonna have you bring your sky color in over your tree. And then I want you to drag it down like this. So I actually want you to drag your sky color down into your tree. I want you to actually pull it down into the tree like that. Okay. Because it's you let it go. It's easy to go too high. Yeah. Right? And then I want you, while it's still wet, I want you to grab your green. And this is okay. This is a this is just, we're just learning how to do this, right? I want you to take some of your your dark tree color and see I've got some on my brush and I'm tapping up, I'm tapping up in here, tapping. I'm not pushing my paint up like that. I'm tapping, I'm tapping so that I have something that looks more transparent, right? If I have even this right here, so I need to get, I don't want this feeling of a, of a strong line. There's got to be a soft edge here. That's all right. This is a touch thing, right? This is a, come on, what's going on there? There we go. Tapping. We want it to be less solid up here because that's really what's happening. And let me know when you guys are ready to start talking about clouds. Do do I do a reminder lesson on clouds? Um, I I didn't leave much room for clouds, so I didn't leave room for that big old cloud. But I can show you how to do a couple of clouds, and then you can decide what to add into your composition, if any. And of course, right now my. Um, my, once I get these in, I can see that my barn is looking a little dull. Uh, so I'm probably gonna go back in and ultimately and, and work that area a little bit too, let's see. Julia, I can't see this at all. You can't take a picture of it sideways like that. You gotta stand over the top of it. <laughs> You've given me double perspe double skewing problems. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. I'm going to look at your. I'm going to say, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay. So this side, this side's looking great. Uh, this side, you need to angle up slightly at the bottom, which means everything needs to slight. This needs to angle up. Okay. And then, so the first thing you're gonna do, Julia, and I wonder if I can even find it here. I might even be able to show you. Let's see, if I can go to the last class and show you the base. Yes, I can. So your first step is going to be, um, here we go. So Julia, your first step is gonna to be to do a base like this. You're gonna start with a very big brush like this, a thick 
one inch brush. Do not use, absolutely, you are forbidden from using, hold on, this is the brush everybody wants to use. Wait, wait, where is it? Nope, not that one, this one. No using a brush like this. Nope, nope, okay. nope. Do not even touch it, put it away. <laughs> Uh, you're going to use a thick one inch, five, six centimeter brush like this, and you're going to paint uh, in viridian green, all the areas that you see that are viridian green, the darks, and then you're going to use a war more watery layer of green to paint this. And then your sky and is going to be, uh, is going to be orange, cadmium red and cadmium yellow. So this is the this is the kind of values that you're going to be using on your base layer. That's what you're doing. Got it? Let me know if you have questions as you're doing I'm it. Give it a go. Give it a go. And I like it. You're just like, I don't know why she wants me to do this, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice, you guys, I, some of you may have a fan brush. And you might think, oh, this is the answer to my question my problems. I can't stand this brush. I almost never use it. I was just thinking, I have it. I have a few because every once in a while it is useful. Uh, and Marie. But Leo, huh? it was in your initial list of equipment for it, watercolor, I think. It, it, a fan? Yeah. Oh, in only, fact, be it only because. You have to get one with a fan. And I looked high and low for one that had a fan. A I said there was a fan. You needed a fan. That can't possibly be. I included in a list in an Amazon list. There was a, a picture no. of a group of brushes. I don't, I never asked a, for a fan. It was like the, the very first um, list. What? Oh yeah, that, I never asked for fans. They show up. Okay. I never use this. I don't like this brush. Um, I, occasionally it's helpful, but uh, I find it's more uh, likely problematic. So people think, oh, I can do this swirly motion and I can get this. I think you can get a lot more out of a thick brush with a kind of raggedy edge, right? I guess that's my point. Yeah, I never use a fan. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that was me not being careful about what I was putting down. Can you send that over to me, Sandra, just so I can see? I'll try to find it. It's an old yes. one. Well, yes, I'll find, find it, definitely. Find it, that would be great. Uh, and I will get that off. All right. You guys tell me when you're ready to talk about clouds. When anybody's ready to talk about clouds, I will do clouds. But don't rush. I'm ready. Are you yeah. ready? OK, yeah. let's do it. So clouds, I love clouds. Clouds have a really specific, let me look at Emma's first and then I'll click. Oh yeah, beautiful Emma, wonderful. Look at Emma's, look at uh, how the orange in Emma's sky is coming through under the blue and how pretty that is. So pretty, very pretty. Emma, I'm like so glad you're doing this. I, I love, I remember, I'm not calling you out, but I remember how the first brush painting lesson in January, you were very unsure. Uh, and I feel like you have taken up painting like a trooper. Like, I feel like what you can do now versus what, all of, for all of you, this is true, but I just remember because you were vocalizing it, probably everybody was feeling the same way, but you were like vocalizing it, how hard it was, right, to get into that. I just wanna credit you, your painting has just gone through the roof. Everybody's has. It's pretty amazing. It's kind of blowing my mind. I just really have seen a lot of growth in, in three months. It's amazing. Okay, so uh, I am going to give myself actually a new palette. So I'll scoot this guy over. All of you are great. I was just looking, I just um, gave a uh, TR headquarters, like new work from all of you, from pretty much everybody here who works for Thompson Reuters. Um, I just gave you, I just gave them all like your best work from the last who quarter. You, who do you send it to, Leah? I sent it to Erica, somebody. I'll have to look at that up later. Okay. I'll tell you later. Uh, she puts it up on a little rotating slideshow at the top of it. Oh, perfect. It's pretty awesome. And I was just looking at how great everybody's work was and going, wow, this is great. I mean, this is not like your, you know, like your best work of the last year. This is just your best work of the last quarter. Okay, so enough said. Sorry, Tashween, I know I was like going on. Um, there is, 
a little bit of cadmium red and a little bit of yellow ochre here. I'm gonna start by mixing those together. I'm starting by mixing the shadow color of the, um, of the cloud. Because as we know, clouds have sides. They have tops and bottoms and sides. Depending on where the light is, one area is kind of lighter. So this is the cloud base. And then I'm gonna take some ultramarine blue, not phthalo, it'll look different, and scrub it in there. A little bit of ultramarine blue. And then, uh, look, I think this is too yellow. I'm gonna have to add some more red. And then I'm gonna add, yep, way too yellow. I'm gonna add some more white to it. So I can tell when, I'm gonna add more blue and more red in here. So what I'm looking for is kind of a grayy purple. If you look like you have, if it's too red or too blue or too yellow, you need to have, add more of the other colors in. See how I'm doing that? So that you have this kind of mauvey and then white. And you usually can't tell until you add the white, what's really going on with your gray. So we're mixing a kind of a medium, bricky, mauvey gray. This is, by the way, also a base skin tone mix when you're doing portraits, adding other things depending on what, you know, what, what the tone of the skin is, but this is a gray. So this should look like a gray. Let me write this down. Cad red, uh, uh, yellow ochre, alt blue, plus white, and then I'm balancing it to make sure one color doesn't dominate and I get a kind of nice movie here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my big brush again. So let's see, let me just pull it out. I'll do a cloud. So you can see, right, when we look at these, if you wanna put these big storm clouds, you can, I'll probably just put one or two little ones that it's quite purple down here, right? It's quite dark and purpley down here and that the lights are on the top. So I'm gonna add a few clouds. Oh, still, it's still too yellow, bringing in more blue. There we go, that's a little bit better. Sometimes you don't really see how, what the color is until you're on it. And so you see, I'm kind of laying in a few bottoms of clouds here using this mix. And then before it dries, I'm going to scoop up some basic white, really loading my brush. And I'm going to scrub in white to the edge of my shadow, the shadow color. And then I'm going to drag the white in. So what you wind up with, and you can go over and put more white on the top. What you wind up with is a very subtle transition from light to kind of a medium. Let me do that again so you can really see it. It's white on the top. You'll notice I have a lot of white on my brush. Right? So it comes right to the edge of the shadow and then I drag it down into the shadow. And I might have to go back after about three strokes and put in more white because my white might get a little bit sort of mucked up by the shadow. I still want there to be a transition from light to darker, but I want it to be really subtle. Notice once again, I'm kind of tapping around the edge so that there's nothing really, the only solid part is really right in the middle. So if I wanted to, I could take white and kind of tap out. And then I might go back in, I'm feeling like my blue is still looking kind of dull. So I might go back in and add a little bit more blue sky around, right, a little bit lighter. And I can also kind of push that into the edges 
of my cloud a little bit so it's a little bit softer. Oops. There we go. Lion? Dragon? No, not a mine. I, more, more. Oh, right. Your talker. I forget. Your cat's a real talker. I always forget that. See how I'm also bringing this blue kind of down into my trees? I want a lighter. Uh, skies generally are lighter towards the horizon line, towards the land, and they get a little bit darker as they move up. So you can add more white to your mix kind of down here, particularly if you're trying to really push your the, the contrast between your dark trees. And then you can get a little bit darker as you get towards the top. We did a whole lesson on clouds at the very beginning of this unit. Uh, that should still be on the thread. So you might want to try it. Clouds and trees. You guys remember a long time ago, feels like. Many paintings ago. So all of you, I want you to remember that if you want to um, continue painting, check in on the Sunday classes, or if it's too late for you, as Rashmi pointed out, um, check the videos. Nice. Yeah. And then you may want to just add some more. So, and then here's where you get to use your pointy brush. Right, where we get into some of this more detail work, like here. Now I'm going to start working on my, I'm going to start working on pushing my, um, the contrast. So now I'm at my pointy brush and maybe taking a little bit of white and hmm, let's see. Oh, there's so much blue in this. Actually, I could take an even smaller pointier brush. No Annika, don't you even ever feed that cat? I constantly, constantly Const feed him. Animal, animal abuse. I, that's not what he just said. He's going, he wants to go out. He said, I'm uh, hungry and I want to go out. This woman never feeds me. I never get fed. What an abuser. I know. Oh, SBA. I never get fed. Never. No, I know. He's completely neglected. Oh, yes, he is a neglected cat. It's obvious. Especially in the morning, he's very neglected. And I bet. What a naughty boy. <laughs> uh, let me take a picture of this, by the way, so you can see these clouds. Of how they're looking. Um, so I'm feeling number one. If I'd like a little bit more, kind of a bright red. In my barn. I'm still. I'm using cadmium red for sort of top barn layers. I'm still. Oh, no, I can't. I'm not going to do this in my way. I often lean on my, you can see me, I'm sort of, to get into my detail work, I will often lean on my table. <clears throat> to kind of lean it, to, to steady my hand. Right? While I get into some of this. Detail. You know, like that? I don't know. Maybe it's not. I'm kind of more interested in the shadows right now. Get some of that shadow area. Oh, I just found out the funniest thing. 
I just found out that Portland has a yearly catio tour. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they release a map of people's houses who have catios. <laughs> you can go. Oh, you should go because you might learn and, something. I might. Well, I would, except that I think it's at the same time as the open studio art tour. <laughs> so well, more of what I'm thinking is. Maybe send your husband, your, your partner. Yeah, my partner to take a look. I was like, do you the want to join? The catio builder. The catio builder, so he can get a little, he doesn't like his current catio. He wants to do better. That's what I was like. I know I'm kind of obsessed with it right now. I started, this is a very Portland ethos. Like Portland isn't all that big on, um, uh, on public works projects. And you know what I mean? Like getting big fancy sculptures, like public art really is not the Portland way, but if you, Portland has a real maker's vibe. So if you offer something where people can get into your, somebody's backyard and see what they made, that is what that is what Portland people value. It's really interesting. More than all the fancy, you know, stuff. It's like, oh, like, can I get into somebody's yard and see how they made a catio? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I was just laughing about it. I was thinking, what a funny, absurd. Maybe you could take Hermes. Yes, we could take Hermes. Which one he would like? Yes, Hermes, do you prefer that one? With the, yeah, talk about <laughs> neglecting our cat completely, right? We spoil our cats, those of us who do not have children. We do. And it's such a pleasure. It is, they're adorable. So I'm going in and kind of popping my shadow colors, getting a little bit darker with my shadows. I'm trying to decide like how much like work I want to do on the barn itself. I feel like right now the barn is sort of pushing back a little bit. So I'm trying, I'm playing with colors. And I'd like you guys to do the same. Play with the colors. Julia, how's it going over there? Nearly there. All right. I'm so slow these days. I feel you. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Everything's forever. That's the point of this, is to be... Right. Excellent. That's perfect. All right. So what you're going to do, I'm trying to remember what our first glaze was. Was it a, do you guys remember last week what we glazed? Was it blue? Oh. Um, I think it was blue. So Ju Julia, let this dry. Huh? Let it dry your pain dry. And when it's dry, let me know and I'll tell you the next step. Shouldn't take too long to dry. Maybe a few minutes. Have a cup of coffee. Just sit and watch for a minute. Yes. <laughs> or, or wait, sorry, it's after work for you. So drink. <laughs> if, you so, if you're so inclined, drink, drink. Something stiff, yeah. <laughs> yes. Leah, I've sent you the picture for the first glaze lab. Let me see. Oh, thank you, darling. You're so good. Yeah, it was a blue, wasn't it? No, was it blue? Yeah, it was blue. It was blue. Yes, thank you, Rashmi. You are awesome. Uh, Ani, much better. 
Very lovely. Yeah. So now I just kind of work on these greens to make them pop a little bit more yellow. That's where I was going. I'm kind of working. So remember, all your greens need a little bit of red in them and a lot of yellow. A lot of yellow. So way more yellow. Almost completely yellow, right? It's to sort of bring in that poppy so we can have some things kind of bright and coming forward. Not everything, but I'm working, right now I'm working the edge. Just trying to bring a little bit more brightness to this scene. Notice I'm really paying attention to the edge where like the grass meets the barn. Maybe, let's see what happens if we add a little bit more. I've been kind of ambivalent about this barn, about the colors of the barn. I'm a little bit ambivalent about going red, but I might just go basic red, see what I, ugh, no, red with green. I'm putting a little bit of green in with my red just to pop it back a little bit because I feel like that red color is a little bit too vibrant. Kind of like that more. So you see, I'm now, I'm still thinking about edges as I'm adding on my final thing. I'm looking at like where a light edge meets a dark edge and, and making sure that pops out. If it doesn't pop, it means that I've done this, too, the values are too flat, right? So see how I just pushed the barn, the colors of the barn, and now I'm gonna go back in, let's see. Going in and pushing the shadows, pushing the colors. I don't think I'm going to do that little gate there. I think this painting is too small for that, but kind of. I'm noticing that here, this edge has kind of disappeared and I want it to come back. So I'm lightening this so that the dark around. So I'm really looking, I'm constantly, as I'm deciding what to do, the decision is made based on, you know, what areas I, where, where, where an edge meets another edge. So Julia, let me know when you're ready and I'll tell you what to do next. Let me know when your painting yep, is dry. No, I'm ready. All right, so now you're gonna take uh, ultramarine blue on your palette and you're gonna do a glaze like I did that yellow ochre glaze. So you're going to put a lot of water on your big brush. You're going to pull a little bit of blue. Here, I'll show you. And you're gonna cover the whole thing, but you want to be able to see your painting through it. So uh, here. Do this so you can see it. So you can see I'm getting a lot of water on my brush and some blue paint, but nothing that you can see. You know, no, 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 like this is like loading your brush with paint, right? No, no globs of paint, just watery blue is going to go on your brush. And then you're going to come up here and along your whole painting, you're going to lay this watery layer down. If it covers up too much, take a little paper towel and pull it off, tap it off. It'll leave a nice little film, but not too much. Okay. See, so you're gonna do that. And then it just depends on how far we go. I'll, I'll start telling you how to mix colors. You may have to return to the video from last week's class to see how to finish the mixing, but we'll get as far as we can today. Now I'm lighting this a little bit better. These 
some really great paintings, actually. They're quite fun. Yesterday's, here's yesterday's painting I thought turned out really well. Uh, this is the barn that we did in yesterday's class. That turned out kind of nice, yeah? And then yeah. here is the barn. Here's the sort of painting we did on, on Wednesday's class. So these are these paintings are really all taking on everything that we have learned and adding them in, right? In some way, we learned about structure and perspective. We learned about how to do trees. We learned about how to do clouds. We did a field with grasses in it. So now we're just kind of we did mountains. So now we're kind of combining all those elements. If you want to try any of these, part what they both took two sessions. They both took about four hours. Um, so you can take uh, they're on the site. So you can take those and try them. They are pretty neat, as well as this one. Is anybody gonna try to do more acrylic painting? Or are you just excited to go to watercolor? I, I know Sandra's work. answer. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited about oil. <laughs> oh, yes, me too. Oh, my God, I can't wait to start getting into oil. We'll get into oil. Um, yeah, soon, very soon, for those who want to do it. Uh, you'll see there's some similarities. I mean, I can teach them together, oil and acrylic, but the materials are different enough, like they behave differently enough that you will see. I can't, like I once tried to demo a painting in both oil and acrylic at the same time. I couldn't do it. It was the, the, the difference in the medium is enough that like, uh, the difference in the way the medium behaves is enough that you can't really do both, it's too confusing. But the, you, can, you, can do an, you can do an oil painting demo in acrylic or vice versa. You'll see what I mean, it's pretty neat. I, yes, I, I always forget, I like acrylic more than I think. Um, there are things I even do in acrylic, like things I kind of even say for acrylic painting. Okay. But I will say that oil is my love, my one true, my first love here. Not too much. You're a sweet one. You want to go inside? I'm really noticing that this oops, Are you looking? I'm really noticing that you can sort of see that this part of the roof is a little bit lighter because the lights coming from the right. Notice I'm not painting every sort of ridge, but I am trying to get a little bit of lighter, brighter. Oh, here, I may regret this. I may get rid of it. I may not like it, but. Now I have a dog in my lap instead. Oh. oh. A big dog? Yeah. Let's see. Can you see? Can you see? Oof. Here, hold on. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, hello. Hey. Here, hold on. I'm going to add a spotlight really quick. Oh, wait, Joe. Hello. Thank you. Hello. 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 You're looking at you. Hello. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <Hello>. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you like art classes, huh? Animals get very excited by art. <laughs> yes, um, they do. They love it. Like they can feel your, because they're very attuned to your shifts in energy. And yeah. they can feel as you're breathing deep, right? They get excited. There's, yeah. That's absolutely true. Animals get very excited by the artistic process. And sometimes it depends on the animal's personality. Sometimes they want to interrupt it. You know, sometimes they're like, uh, they just want to be part of it. They want to jump up on it and do it too. But I feel it's because they're so uh, affected by how you feel 
Yeah. That, like they can feel what happens as your breathing deepens and you get more kind of concentrated and focused. It's like you're sleeping, but awake. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why animals really Oh, nice, Julia. Great. Anik, there you go. Looking beautiful. Lovely. So just keep working to pop some of these colors here. Okay, so Julia, uh, your next step. Let's see. Um, so now you're going to take, uh, now you're going to start mixing some of the colors for your barn. So your barn is going to include red with a touch of viridian green in it to do the base layer. And then these dark spots are going to be ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Burnt so sienna. Is, yep, okay. burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for your darks. And then reds will be viridian green, uh, uh, cadmium red with a bit of viridian green in it. I don't have um, a a cadmium red. What I've got have? a I've got a um, pyro something parole red mm -hmm. or uh, I've got a naphthol red. Okay. Which is the orangest red? You pick the orangey the, the red that looks the most orangey to you and use that one. Okay, I think that's or the nap. Mix them both or you can mix them both and you can try mixing them both. Um okay. Your shadows, actually, your shadows can just be viridian green, uh, sorry, viridian green and whichever red you choose. So you can make a darker, so you'll do like red with a touch of green in it. And then for your shadows, you can do green with a touch of red in it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Love awesome. it. Awesome. I just want to paint all day. I don't want to work anymore. I've decided. Yeah, <laughs> don't tell him. Don't tell everybody that. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like oh my god! I'm like, well, the players. I know. I was. I actually said I had a great uh, talk with one of the VPs of HR uh, for NBC. Uh, uh, NBC Studios. They are. They are probably going to come on and join us. Um, in a couple of months. And she was like, yeah. And she she immediately recognized that this is something that her employees needed. And I was like, and she said, well, how many, can you track how many people use it? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's pretty easy. You'll have some people who will take every class. <laughs> You'll have some people who will just show up every once in a while. And then you have some people who come like once a week, but you, and I said, I don't know when they get any work done. And then I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but she okay. got it. She got it. She totally got it. She, it, it was nice. She was like, I have never heard of a program like this. And uh, which surprised me. I thought there were more things like this for people at work, but maybe not. Maybe it's the I guess live it's aspect. coming, you know. Yeah, I guess maybe the, the live aspect of it you know, the, the pandemic and the yeah, the kind of added more work and having to work from home. It's all much more stressful. Exactly, exactly. Ooh, Rashmi, that's starting to look beautiful. Okay, Rashmi, the only thing I want you to do is get rid of those whites. They don't work at all. Can you see that? They're popping out. <coughs> no white. Get rid of the whites that are in your trees. Uh, otherwise, this is looking great. Just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Otherwise, just beautiful. And then you can just keep playing around with it. Uh, yeah, it's the same with me, Rashmi. I don't have that much place for clouds, so I just I just have a few here. I love how bright your colors are. I really love how bright the colors are. Ooh, very 
very moody, Olga. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I feel like somehow this line, this has to come sort of swooping down more. Mm -hmm. This line has to be more steeply angled. You've lost your angle. So these, these look like they're parallel and they should not be. This should be one level of angle and this should be steeper. So uh, take your green and try and carve out some of that. Thank you. Yep. Um, let's see. Ooh, Tashween, fun. All right, so Tashween, uh, a lot of things are really working and I love how you got your clouds into the background here. This is wonderful. These clouds are looking a little too solid to me uh, around the edges. So, and, I, and this brown, the line here, you wanna get rid of. So I would go back in and mix more of your shadow color for your clouds, push it in and then try, um, sort of this a little this round robin tapping thing. So let me show you how it works. You get so get your you get your shadows in. So your clouds are looking a little too solid and they need a little bit more variation. So I'm gonna very quickly mix, let's see, we are one to two let's mix some shadow color down here. Hold on. Okay, so you really want to go back in with your shadow color up a little bit, maybe even down. And then clean off your brush, get white on it. And you're, you're really gonna load your brush with white and you're gonna start in the center here and tap out. See this? So that, and then brush down so that it's softer and more varied than a solid white cloud like this. See that? See how this is kind of what you did, solid white cloud, little bit of variation, little bit of variation here. You want a little bit more. So I'm very lightly holding and tapping and moving out. I love how you got this going here though with the trees, that just looks great. You can take also some of your sky color and bring it in to the clouds so that your clouds are nipped back a little bit. So fun, these little barn photos. I really dig them. I, I was sort of like, I tend to find landscapes a little bit tedious, but uh, I like cityscapes much more, although they're also tedious in a different way. Um, but I really enjoyed doing these. I thought these were a lot of fun to do, more than I thought I would. Ah, oh. so Annika, I'd say the same thing about your clouds. They're a little bit too thick. You're, you're, so let me tell you what I really love. Love the trees. Mm -hmm. Love uh, what's happening here with the, these things coming up. But the clouds are a little bit too thick. So take some blue sky and thin them out a little bit. Okay. Uh, particularly around the edges. So it's funny, you have a very particular brush stroke style. It's very um, solid. I can see it and I don't want to wreck it, but I want you to learn how to nuance it. And okay. so the, t the problem that you run into when you run into a problem is your edges are always too hard. 
So always be thinking about how to soften my edges, right? How to soften the edges. Um, it's, well, you're still gonna do what you do. So I'm trying not to, you know, I don't wanna talk you out of it. I just want you to learn how to finesse it a little bit more. Yeah. This style that you do. Can you please give me some advices too? Because I'm a bit lost. Let me see. Earlier. Let me see. I just corrected the roof a bit because it was. Yeah, too, it was not, not enough. Flat. Okay, let's see. Aria. Yeah. Oh, Anik, you have conquered and you have won. All right, let's see. Oh, I see. Uh, Emma, wonderful. Anya, wonderful. Uh, Tashween, go to your just, where, why am I not seeing yours? Ah, here we go, Olga. Hey, this is Anya. <laughs> An, oh, Anya. Oh, Anya. Let's see. So Anya, the, you and Olga, for some reason, have a similar tenor voice. I always confuse them. <laughs> I, don't, like, I don't know why. Um, beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, Anya. So Anya, this green is too green. It's way, I love your, by the way, your roof is looking pretty good. Uh, this is too steep. So your okay. roof is too steep. So you want to make that angle less. But yeah. really the thing that's popping out to me that's problematic is the green of the trees. You've just used meridian here. You need to mix red in with your, burnt sienna in with your viridian to create okay. something that looks dark and tree-like. So okay. mix viridian green and burnt sienna and then go back over and get rid of that sort of past, you know, that sort of jewel tone blue, which is really not the color. So that's okay. what I would do. And then, yeah, get some more red in and carve out this shape a little bit. <laughs> so funny. You too, I always do it. Yeah, I should just introduce myself. That's <laughs> okay. No, it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get there. Really nice. We got about 20 minutes left. 20 minutes, and then we move to watercolor officially. Yay. And Leah, sorry, I was so focused on um, uh, the sky that I missed about the cloud speed. So I don't know, I don't want you to repeat everything, but mm -hmm. so it's just similar to the sky, right? It's just one parallel and then one vertical, something like this. It's more like you go in a circle. Okay. Like this. So you need to start with the shadow color of the clouds and which I sent earlier in the thread. Yeah. And then you lay a white on top and then you kind of tap over and brush into this, the shadow color. So less about vertical like this and more like a circle. See, like that, tap, 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 tap. So you get brush, you start with stuff on your brush and then you move out where it gets and then you brush down a little bit and then you move out. So that gets a little bit more like the trees where the trees hit the sky. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, cool. I, almost, I almost don't have to walk white left, but I'll try something. <laughs> yes. Try something. <laughs> <laughs> That's always, try something is always when the interesting things happen. Sometimes good, <laughs> sometimes not so good, but definitely. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, very nice, Julia. That's good. So this base tree color is viridian green and burnt sienna. So you can like get in a kind of base tree color. Okay. Very dark. And then probably, well, we'll, we'll see how far you get. And then what I recommend is going back to the initial video, which was a week ago, and which was on the, let's see, what today is the second. So this would have been the 27th. Let me look. There's a video that's on the date. Uh, 
26. Yes, thank you, the 26. And that will talk to you about all the beginning mixes here so that you can like go through and do the beginning part of the painting. And then you've kind of been sitting through this section. In any event, whatever we don't catch here, you can also catch in that video, I guess is my point. And for anybody who missed stuff, like there is a whole, we have all three months of lessons on the YouTube channel. So you can go back and do every one. You can start with clouds, then move to trees. Uh, and then I forget what we did. We did, we've done a lot, kind of a lot of things. Oh yeah, Diana, this is coming along. I love how the the cat is leaning and how the shadow is very, I love how you've got the lighting on this, how the shadow, the shadow, the cat and the cat shadow are almost leaning into each other. I really love compositionally. And then you've got this beautiful light side. I really love compositionally how that's working. You think the freeze works now? Yeah, I'm trying to decide if you need anything more back there. You know, I might just leave it for the moment. Yeah. And if you do anything else to, I'd move on to the next one. The leg looks great, by the way, in the front. Fantastic balance. It's a very dynamic um, scene. And compositionally, it's very nice. You know what? I would leave it. I'd say you might fiddle around with the snow a little bit, but right now I like the strength of the shadow. I like the background. I think you're in good shape. I'd say move to the next one. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Can I just say something I observe about this? Let me see. Good job. Um, I find it interesting that everybody's look more similar this time than on other times. Uh, wow, I guess you're right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes and no. Yeah, yes and no, though, I think. Yeah, I see what your point is. I wonder, I think you guys are getting more brush control. Um, maybe? That's a good observation. I wonder why. I don't really know why. These are looking great. I love them. More on the perspective bit, and it had like, like straight shapes. So, I mean, not straight shapes, but it had like defined shapes. So, yeah. Maybe because well, maybe on. they followed your mixes more, Leah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe your maybe your the mixes are becoming more like yeah, that's right. That's an interesting. I don't really know. <laughs> you know both of those things could be good. True. Um, Joshween, I still think you've got too much cloud in the in the top left corner here. I even I know that's what's happening here, but I don't think it really works for this painting. So I would really cut in with sky here, kind of shape out this cloud. It's a little bit too much cloud in my view. So on this left, sorry, you're not seeing where I'm pointing. On this left side, get rid of the cloud and put in sky. It's just, uh, it does, it's interesting. You're going to find that as we work, um, what works compositionally in the photograph does not work on the painting. Paintings and photographs need different things. We use the photograph as a source, but then we. Should I be doing the same for my um, for my grass? Yes, you're going to be mixing green 
with a touch of red and a lot of yellow to lighten it. Okay. Mm -hmm. No white, right? Green, a touch of red, a lot of yellow. So yeah, it's interesting. All these variations are just variations in mixing, right? You're kind of using the same thing, but. Spend another 10 minutes working on your painting, getting help from me if you need it as you're working. And I want you to think in your mind, what, what has acrylic painting, what is, what is this uh, quarter of painting brought to you? What do you like about it? What do you think you learned in this quarter of painting? Learned to do well. I'll ask you in a minute. We just spend a little time right now. Oh, and I'm gonna need to get, hang on, I'm gonna need to get my plug. Anique, lovely. Ha! I love it. I feel like, Anique, your brush control has gotten really good in the last couple of months, would you say? Thank you. Have you noticed that yourself? I'm surprised, it's honestly saying. It's like, um, I never thought that I would like um, acrylic that much. So it's worth I'm it, really right? Good. Even to do it, yeah. even if you're not, even if it's not what you do, it's kind of worth it, isn't it? Totally. And I added some flowers to this barn. I like the flowers. Yes, like a try climbing fig of roses or something. Hmm. 
Leah, how dark should my grass be? Because I'm looking on your at yours on the screen. Is it is it sort of you know supposed to be a really dark base layer or that you uh, like? You already have a dark base layer, so no, you can go lighter on this layer. Great question. You already have the, you already have the red layer, so you can you can go lighter. Uh, we really go dark in the areas that are darker, right? And kind of the darker. Oh. Ah, nice, Annika. Great. There you go. Now you're starting to get. Um, so the only other thing, Annika, is I feel like this bit is still kind of like popping up too much. I like your edges here, but like this is a little, I lighten that a little bit. Um, <laughs> wow, Natalia. Oh, so Natalia, are you doing this? Is Are you just on session one of this? No, I'm just really slow today. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, so. so something looks off about your roof. Um, you mm -hmm. have the roof, the roof needs to bend more this way. It needs to bend more this way. Okay, yeah, I see what so, you mean. Um, yeah, that's a little, that's very off. That, that's the thing you want to fix. Um, and then of course you just want to go lighter on things, but I like how you're playing with color here. Yeah. Rashmi, very nice. So Rashmi, I really like this. I want, the only thing I want to see you do, these whites, the only place you should really see white is in the roof. These whites are too bright. Can you see how they come forward and then you notice if there's not like here, here, here. Yeah. Uh, they just pop forward too much. You could just glaze it like a purple. You could just glaze them purple or blue to push them back. But right now they're too bright and coming forward. So white is something that you use. And by the way, beautiful. I love what's happening up here. Very nice, like quite beautiful edges. Your trees are starting to come, really coming along. Quite nice. Emma, nice. Gosh, Emma, gorgeous. Lovely. <laughs> All right, so while you're kind of doing your last fixes, oh wait, and I think Julia, you sent something over and I just missed it. Oh yeah, Julia, absolutely coming along. Um, but this is, what you want is not this flat brush stroke. Okay, so now what I want you to do, Julia, is go back and review the video and it'll talk about the kind of brush strokes you need to really do grass. So grass is not a horizontal thing. It's a choppy up and down. It's a vertical. Yeah, I would, that's what I was doing, but maybe it doesn't come across. <laughs> uh, it's not at all. And the reason it does not at all, and it, it looks like you've gone horizontal. And the reason is that you've kept everything very flat. You've kept a hard line here, a hard edge. And grass yep. is not a hard edged subject, right? It's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's got a soft edge, which means that there's like, you need a kind of scruffy edge here, which you can get with this vertical chop better. Anyway, don't worry about it. You'll get it. You'll get it. It's a you're if you're new to painting, this is all gonna be new. Um, Anya, much better on your trees. Great job. All right, so guys, I want you to I'm gonna stop for the moment and I want you to remove the spotlight, put you in the gallery view. I want you to just tell me. Uh let's see, let's start with uh Ani. I want you to tell me what it is that this three months of painting has brought you. It could be anything. 
What's the best more thing? patience. Yeah. More patience, better control of the brush, and basically completely new experience and way of thinking about painting. Good. I'm not like super stressed about white spaces right now. <laughs> because I can go over them again, which is yes. really you know, kind, of, kind of, you know, strange uh, sense of freedom. Yes, it was great. Yes. Honestly, yes. it was great. Because there's, you can do so much, right? With so, like you can do so much with just a few strokes, if you're just paying attention to edges. I think that's part of it and getting your colors in. Olga, what about you? What has this uh, three months of painting brought you? Layering, layering, layering. And mixing. Of course, I learned like really a lot of, but the most two, the most important things for me was layering and color mixing because before that I didn't know how to do this, and now like I feel this, and especially with color, so it's it's blown my mind. I'm really happy about that. That's so awesome, Emma. What about you? I'm sorry, you're in the middle of it, but I want to know what uh, these three months of painting brought you. I'm actually trying to pick. Um, bristles off the painting because <laughs> there are quite a lot of bristles stuck in yeah all over. yeah 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 no i love i love colors and um uh i'm glad i was kind of overwhelmed at the beginning but yeah you totally like come right in and you can come into the middle of a lesson now and catch up and pick it up that's really amazing Rashmi, what about you? What has uh, three months of painting brought? I know you've been in and out, but like, what have you, what has three months of painting brought you? So first of all, I like, you know, learned from zero. So I didn't know anything about painting. So right from uh, like how to hold a brush and everything. And now I can at least like, you know, now I'm interested to learn more. I enjoy painting and that's one big achievement. And yeah, I feel I'm like you described that very well in a couple of your posts, particularly the one about the tulip where you were talking about that, that I aha was about moment. About to give up. Yes, I was like, I can't do this. This is not for me, but yeah. So, I, so embracing that feeling of, I have no idea what's supposed to happen here is, and then slowing down and starting again and trying again is really a great like um, achievement. It's been a massive achievement. Um, Natalia, what about you? What is like three months of painting brought you? Oh, so many things. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really, it's a brand new world. And I just, I love how uh, uh, you once said, uh, I like this expression that you uh, lose some, you gain some, that it's a constant. Yes, like, you're constantly uh, pulling and pushing and pulling yes, and pulling. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And what I see in myself, which makes me pretty happy, is that I'm not afraid to change everything. Like, <laughs> I, when I'm not happy, I'm not happy. And even if something is okay, it's okay to try over. Like, like children do, I guess. I don't know. It's like constant exploration. Like, yes. we, and, and, and I love this about it. It's <laughs> just so many options. <laughs> you guys are so poetic. I love this description. Anya, what about you? What's this spot? What is three months of painting about you? Oh, yeah, uh, I think it's learning that whatever mess I've done, I still can correct it. Because <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> yeah, I think it applies to life as well. It's like sometimes I think I messed up so much and I'm like, okay, <laughs> maybe it's, it's still, you know, can be very shiny. <laughs> it can be beautiful. The, the errors can be beautiful. Like they can be the foundation for something very beautiful. Very well said. Uh-oh, uh, uh, we're getting more and more uh, poetic as the night, as the plate goes on. What about you, Tashween? What is, uh, what is painting brought you? Um, definitely being okay with making mistakes and being able to fix it. And I love how you said early on, uh, you said uh, that you used to say that you would feel very nervous at the beginning of a class. I don't know if you still do. Um, yeah, but now you're like kind of jumping. You're like, all right, I'm nervous. What am I going to learn by the end of the class? That's a really fantastic way to go into it. Like, and I hope. Like, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but like, there's like a really specific, um, like feeling of anxiety could be like either fear or excitement. Yeah. And I'm wanting to like turn my fear into excitement. It's um, it's like stage fright. 
right? Like every actor experiences stage fright before they go on stage. Apparently, uh, what was his name? J J uh, Barrymore, the big one, the old one, the dude. He Bob used to, Barrymore. Yeah, John Barrymore vomited before every performance. And uh, that is taking anticipation and turning, so getting that that's part of the creative process. That's really exciting. Um, Diana, what about you? Well, I rediscovered painting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And you figured out how to get it into your life in a daily yes. way. So you figured yes. out how to Starting work it. Starting in the morning really works. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this time slot yes. as many days of the week as I can because That's... I can still work then. It doesn't, yes. it doesn't inflict on my work. Right. That's great. And you feel like you get your best work in the morning. So for some people, working late at night really works. Other people, it's in the morning. How about you, Annika? I think that um, a lot of times I'm not at all happy and I'm working and I'm working and I don't know why. And then suddenly by putting a little dot in the eye or something or, you know, the little white dot or something, then suddenly you go, wow. How? Yes. Yeah. Where? Are you, what is the thing? I still get excited about that. What is yeah. the thing that's going to turn this painting into something finished? Yeah. And it's always like you're kind of pushing and pushing and working and working. I'd say you're a master of that. You've really pushed through a lot uh, with your like, okay, I'm not happy. Okay, I'm going to keep working until I get this right. Uh, Sandra, what about you? Just in general, painting. What has painting brought you? Well, it's, I don't know. I've kind of completely fallen in love with watercolors. And what made me look at that is that um, I found acrylic dry too quickly. So, and I wanted to rediscover the joy of painting that I had as a child. And as a child, mm -hmm. it was gouache. So I looked into gouache, but there was none to be found because uh -huh. of COVID, right? A lot of people buying art materials. Uh, and I was looking at um, gouache on YouTube, but in fact, there's a lot more watercolors and people who do both. Um, and I, I've loved it. I'm still trying to master it, but it's it's very different from pastels. I find that- I um, think you're getting great, making great headway in it. I think you're really gonna love it. And as we start talking technique more, I think you're gonna like it even more. I think you'll, I think it'll just yeah. add to what you're already doing. And yes, Julia- it, Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. They're all feeds from each other, and, and I'm getting better at uh, brush dexterity. I was shocked at first about how bad I was with a brush. I don't remember that as a child. So. Right, um. right. We don't remember. <laughs> 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 and Julia, I know, of course, let's just talk about art in general, since you've just jumped into painting and drawing. You're, Julia's been doing a lot of the beginning drawing and pastel landscape classes. What has art brought for you in the last three months? Just complete joy, actually. I just, I just loved it. It's, I don't know. I, I can't put, I can't even put it into words. I, I, I feel kind of quite overwhelmed and emotional about it. Right. I'm crazy. Right. I'm but, feeling uh, that way too as you're talking. Right. I'm feeling that way too. You know, I feel like when I found painting and drawing at age thirty, that I was the the missing link the missing yeah. piece of, of what, of my, the way I approached the world was found. Uh, I often felt a little bit blind, staggering around trying to figure, and I mean this on many levels. Like I, you know, I was a journalist before I loved it, but I often would find myself in situations not being clear on what the real, what was really going on. I struggled to mm -hmm. discern kind of what was important. And once I started to paint and draw, all of a sudden that all clicked into place for me. Like all of a sudden it never, I never had that struggle. So I feel like the brain wants to do this. Just mm -hmm. like the brain, just like the brain wants to read, right? The brain, no, but you don't grow up knowing, how, you don't let, you're not born knowing how to read. And if you think about it, I've been using this analogy a lot because I think about it a lot. Like what would your life be like if you couldn't read? It would be an entirely different life. You'd have frustration you would have, your life would be very limited. There'd be all this information that you can't pick up, right? Just on a daily level. Uh, and to me, drawing and painting is like that. It's an extra skill and your brain wants to do it. Like you, because your brain knows, oh my God, this is gonna trigger a whole set of brain skills that's gonna involve my thinking. And that is like why we all wanna do it. We all have a desperate desire to do it. We all think, most of us think we can't. Um, and then there's despair, 
right? Like along with that, but really it's just the brain going, no, 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 come on guys. And Sandra here, look at here, look at this big fat guy. Oh, he's enormous. He's Have enormous. you weighed him? No, I probably So didn't. you weigh yourself on the scale with and without him. That's the easiest oh, point. Oh, okay. <laughs> because otherwise he won't sit still on a scale. Um, I wanted to add something. Yes. Yeah. So, so I have a food blog and I have it for like last three years and I had just stopped working on it. And yeah, I, I write on food and I cook a lot and, you know, try new recipes. But I, I don't know, this year with the painting, once we started painting, I said, okay, I don't know why I started seeing compositions in my head better. I could think yeah. about pictures better, how to put the frame together better. And it's been such a great thing. Like in, in last two months, I, my blog has grown so much on Instagram. And everyone gives me this compliment. Uh, like, you know, you, you, your compositions are very well balanced. Your color palettes are good. And how do I tell them that it is because of my art class? I always yes. tell them. So this is always, uh, so no, everything is related photography and obviously totally. because photography is an extension of uh, like, you know, painting people. Totally. Paint. Yes. And so, so is and cooking. So is cooking. Yeah. So Janet, I wish Janet Roberts was here. I remember Janet telling me very clearly in the first year that she was painting that food and cooking became very exciting for her. And it was similar. She was finding herself combining food by color she was yeah. finding like just the chopping and the like minutia of cooking to be kind of even more joyful. So it's interesting. And she got very inventive, like mixing yeah, things, trying things about. out, right? Yeah, I know, Ra uh, uh, Rashmi, I was looking at your food blog and drooling <laughs> over the last entry, <laughs> yeah, it was so, gorgeous. Like, I had 1400 followers for one, one and a half years and in uh, one and a half months I've gone to one up to 4,500 followers and I was like this is just because of art it cannot be any, anything else so, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 well send I, us I, the I, link I, across the thread if you wouldn't mind yes, that would please. be great so, thank um Thank you guys for sharing that. I, I think it's important because we go through so many emotional states as we're working right as we're uh as we're, as we're doing art, like we're going through a lot of emotional states. Uh, we're going through frustration, we're going through anticipation, we're going through anxiety, which we wanna turn into excitement, right? We're going through, we're also going through kind of a focusing and a soothing and a calming. All of these things are happening at the same time. Uh, sometimes we're doing a great job, uh, then the next week uh, our painting sucks, we don't know why, right? Like, so there is a, uh, these are all like part of, the life process as you extend if, as you expand beyond what you know so it's a really phenomenal process but all those pieces are part of it so i appreciate you taking the time and i make sure to keep the recording on so whoever's watching this whoever you are watching this uh note that this is where you get to this is the whole reason we do this this is the struggle this is the joy can i say one more thing absolutely it's not about art, it's just about fellowship. I think we've all been very supportive to each other and it's really had a big impact on the difficult last few months. Spoken like a good peer uh, network leader. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, that's why these classes, no matter who joins, no matter what companies join, these classes will never get bigger than 30 because I think that's pretty much the maximum amount we can handle while still, you know, I want everybody to make sure that they're getting to know each other. That's really huge. All right, you guys, uh, on onward and upward, on to watercolor, on to more drawing, on to more pastels, on to more of all of it. Let's just do a lot. Let's do a lot this year. Take care. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.